This video is about the aggregate operator. This operator allows example sets to be restructured in many ways to summarize them in order to help understand the data better or to prepare for subsequent processing. The capabilities of this operator are similar to the SQL group by and having clauses that are familiar from database queries. We'll look at the use default aggregation parameter and the accompanied default aggregation function. We'll look at aggregation attributes, group by attributes, and then we'll also look at count all combinations, only distinct, and ignore missings. So we start, we have a simple process. It retrieves the iris data set and it passes that directly to this operator here. This is an aggregate operator with use default aggregation set to true. The original data set is also passed to a discretize operator which converts attribute A1 from a number into a nominal. Essentially it places examples into one of five bins dictated by the value of A1. The end result of this will be a nominal attribute A1 where it was a real number before and that gets passed to this aggregate operator where use default aggregation is false. But let's start with this one here, use default aggregation to true. So if I set a breakpoint here, we'll look at the data that's passed to it, which is this original one here, and the results. If I run that, so this is the original data. So the iris data set has 150 examples in it, a label which has three values, and numerical attributes A1 to A4. And the result of this is and the result of this is this result here. What's happening here is that the aggregation has been set up so that simply all of the examples are being counted and the default aggregation is having an effect to create these attributes here. Um, let's let's have a look at the setting so we can relate it back to this result here. So here's the settings for this aggregate operator. So use default aggregation. What that does is it brings in this attribute selection criteria and you can decide if you want to include all your attributes or whatever. And what I've done is I've essentially said include everything that's a regular attribute. And for all of those which are therefore included, do an average. And so that's the first thing to say. And then the next parameter to look at is the group by attributes. And I've set that to be absolutely nothing. So there's no inherent grouping at all apart from the entire example set. That's what the default is here. I've also included some aggregation attributes here. And this overrides the default aggregation. So what this will do is essentially an eight, it will count the number of times A2 has appeared and it will do an average based on whatever the group by attributes are set to. So just, just to recap before I run it again, what this means is A1, A3 and A4 will have an average calculated for the example set as a whole because there's no special filtering going on here. And A2 will, have, will count that and we'll also take an average. You can see by the way that there's a, a big list of possible functions, aggregation functions that you can have in here. So if I run it again, hopefully you, you'll see that. So here's the original and here's the the result of the aggregation. So A1, A3 and A4 have had the default aggregation applied, which is just to average them. A2, I've just done the same thing again actually, but I've also counted the number of times A2 has appeared in the example set. It's 150 times, as we would know. If we go back to the input data, so let's just remember 5.843 is the A1 average. Sure enough, there it is, 5.843 is what the uh, input data has in it. Now that's a fairly simple example, but if I just change the group by attributes to include, let's say, let's put the label in there. So now what will happen is it will perform these calculations 
for each possible value of the label. Let's run it so we can see it. It's often easier just to see it rather than to explain it. So if you remember there were three labels, Iris Virginica and Persicola. Now what's happened is the grouping now has a, an additional dimension which is the label. So there are three possible labels. There are 50 examples in each and here are the averages. So the default aggregation is, is that one, is those three there. And I've also put a two in here as an average. If we were to manually inspect the data, we would find that a one for the 50 examples where, which have the label Aristotosa, a one would be 5.006 as its average. If I go back now to this, let's just make a little change to this. We could, for example, do um, minimum. Run it again. Now, if you look at the example set, you can see the minimum value of A2 has been calculated instead of the average, which is the default for these three. I've overridden it. And I can carry on doing this to my heart's content if I so desire. But anyway, you can see, you can um, start to have quite complex group by if you want. So, for example, you could put in here additional group by attributes on the right hand side. We'll see that in a minute when I in the second or aggregate operation. Okay, so let's un undo that. So now the discretize, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to aggregate in a different way. I'm going to t turn default aggregation off. And I think what I'll do is if I'll, I'll set a breakpoint here so we can examine the discretized data. So basically all I've done is I converted attribute A1 from being a real number into an error, a nominal. So it's now a nominal and it has um, five distinct ranges, as you can see here. And all the discretize does is it puts the example into one of those five ranges. Think of those bins, really. And the, the, the names of the attribute gives a clue about the values. So now what we're going to do I go back to here, undo that breakpoint. Now I'm going to do a group by A1, which has been discretized, and the label. And I'm going to, for aggregation, I'm just going to do a count and an average for A1 and A2, just, just to see what happens. If I run that now, what we'll see is, this is the result of that. Now what's happening is, that we were grouping by both A1 and label and for each combination of A1 and label we're calculating the count of the number of A1s that appeared and the average of the A2s. Okay so go back and if I tweak this I could for example add in here I could do the maximum of A3 for example. Run that again. Now you can see here, as you can see, we now have a maximum of A3 that's been calculated with the constraint, which is the group by settings of combinations of A1 and label. So when A1 is in um, this range and when the label is that, then there are 28 examples like that. And the average of A2 was that, 3.186, and the maximum for A3 was 1.9. Okay. And you notice there are some question marks appearing. These question marks are because I have set the count all combinations because I wanted to have all possible combinations of A1 and the label. And you can see there are 15 possible com combinations, but there isn't always data that, that falls into this into this combination of ranges and labels so therefore the count is zero and the averages are and the maximum and so on have no value they're missing and that is what the count or combinations flag does that's the defaults to off I think so if I change that to off now run it again essentially what happens now is fewer examples appear in the output now it's gone down to 12 so these are the 12 combinations for which there are valid values 
uh, essentially the missing ones have been excluded so there were three rows that had missing values which is okay it's just worth knowing okay so let's go back to so now let's look at the only distinct setting so let me just rerun it with only distinct set to false If you remember what happens is it's basically each combination of A1 label and so on. Okay, average A2. Oops, move those around. Better. So this this is the result when only distinct is set to false. Now if I run it again with only distinct set to true, there'll be some subtle changes. What happens is that now the number of distinct values are counted. So obviously for A1, there's only one distinct value for the combination A1 label. And for an A2, the number of distinct values of A2, there are some values of A2 which are the same for the same A1 and label combination. If we look at the discretized data, we can see if we sort by that and that you can if you scroll down here you can see a2 there are certain times when a2 has the same value for the a1 label combination so what that means is that the number of um, distinct values is lower than the total number so the average is changed we can get a final proof of that if I go to here Whoops, if I go to the aggregation attributes and add A2 count, run it again with only distinct set to true, what we'll see is the count of the distinct A2 for the A1 and label combination. So, what this is telling you is that there are nine different values of A2 nine distinct values of A2 when for this particular combination of A1 is that range and label is that okay and that was when when only distinct is set to false are actually 28 total anyway just an interesting subtle point it's important to know knowing you never know you might need it okay okay so what I'll do is I'll leave it with I'll set count all combinations to true now distinct is obviously doesn't count now and I'll leave a1 label as as they were before and I will leave these aggregation attributes like so and I'll run it one more time and leave that as the final view once I've expanded these to make them look a bit nicer there we go oops it doesn't work there we go